my birth, but Southern by the grace of God. This is my first speech in Washington, D.C. So it's a little strange to be speaking at the Lincoln Memorial of all places. John Wilkes Booth did nothing wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna get something. <laughs> yeah, well, as much as you might hate Lincoln the tyrant as a Southerner, as much as you might hate William Tecumseh Sherman for burning down Atlanta and murdering innocents and all the rest, the fact is that there were a lot of radicals back then that wanted all of our officers hanged. They passed an entire amendment to disenfranchise our officers so that they could never run for public office again. But the Confederate officers were not hanged because of Lincoln. Few people know that fact. But Lincoln said, the war is over. The Confederates are our brothers. They are now back in the Union. And there is no reason to hang these men. Let's let them go on with their lives. Thanks, so Lincoln, despite being a symbol of disunity and civil war, is ironically also a symbol of unity. And for the past few months, all I've been talking about is unite the right, unite the right. Unite the right, unite the right, unite the right, until you're blue in the face. And then something like this happens, where we have two separate rallies, people dropping out, people pissing all over each other, ego contest, dick measuring, and all the other uh, things that are unsafe for children's ears. I'm very upset about that fact. I think it is a failure of leadership. I think what we need in the right wing is unity. And really the trick to that is not hitting each other. You don't have to like each other. You don't have to join Identity Europa. You don't have to be all right. I'm not all right. Irma's not all right. You just have to stop attacking each other. There are very real enemies. The Antifa used to be a real enemy. But I tell you what, I'm going to wait for this plane to pass. The Antifa used to be a real enemy. But I have been coming to these free speech rallies for months now. I've been all over the South. I've been to Boston. I've been here. We got Texas next week. These free speech rallies are happening all across the country. And the leftists do nothing. The radical left says, we're going to bash the fash. We're going to beat all these people to death. These Nazis have to be stopped. They're up there on that hill yelling, Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. And the crowd responds, no, no, no. Like children in time out. They're screaming up in their room. And none of y'all can even hear them. But they threaten you with violence. And they'll jump you on the way back to your car. But we all know how cowardly they are. Otherwise, they'd be down here. Yeah, the cops put up a blockade. They can easily walk around it. Come down that way, come down that way. But you know what they're going to do? They're going to sit on that hill, and they're going to act like they won the day because they shouted louder. That's how cowards act. There is no more threat from the radical left. They are done. And that is why we have devolved to infighting. That is why we are now, now all attacking each other. Old light versus old right versus civic nationalists versus white nationalists versus Republicans versus libertarians versus proud boys versus old knights. No one has a common enemy anymore. So we're all fighting amongst each other. But the fact is we do have a common enemy. We started out with one. It still exists. And it's right here. You have an enemy in the Federal Reserve, a private bank that controls your economy. You have an enemy in the federal government, which is controlled by a deep state. You have an enemy in the lobbyists, the special interests that control our foreign policy. Uh, you have enemies in individuals like the Clintons, like Soros. These people still exist. And yet here you are, fighting amongst yourselves. Because one person's a Western chauvinist and the other is a white nationalist. How constructive is that? I want to tell you about a story 
because in my experience, stories are the best way to get information across. So let me tell you about the time that I announced that I was running for the United States Senate down in Florida. And a bunch of people said, we can't let that fascist, Nazi, pagan, devil-worshipping, blood-drinking monster run for office under our banner. Let's attack him. And you know what that did for the Libertarian Party? It destroyed the Libertarian Party in Florida. Because you cannot pretend to care about free speech when you are trying to shut down free speech. You cannot pretend to care about the freedom of assembly when you are telling people they cannot associate with people like Richard Spencer or Augustus Invictus or Chris Cantwell or anyone else because they're too radical. That is not the freedom of assembly that we are guaranteed in this country. The Libertarian attacked, the Libertarian Party attacked because of my religion. You cannot pretend to be the party that stands for freedom of religion when you're attacking someone for not being Christian. Simply not constructive. And they bashed their head against that stone and the party broke. And here I am. Nothing happened to me. You attack people like Richard Spencer or even Jack Posobiec and all you're doing is hurting yourself. What we need to do is come together. And I urge you to learn from the Libertarian Party's own mistakes. Now we got people who are ordered not to be here. People like the Proud Boys. But I'm a Proud Boy and I'm right here. The old knights are here. I'm one of the national organizers. There are Republicans here. There are Libertarians here. There are even leftists here in your ranks because they think they're slick sneaking in here like we don't know who they are. All right, this guy. I mean, honestly, who do you think you are kidding? This is a war. It is not the sort of war that Lincoln fought. This is a new sort of war. Both sides have intelligence operations. Both sides are under the threat of the knife. And both sides seek to infiltrate. But only one side seeks to act like children. And that's the left. So, all in all, what I'm asking for is for all of you to stop attacking each other. I've been around, here another story, I've been around DC in the past few days because we come in and we do surveillance and we talk about security and we prepare for these sorts of rallies so that no one gets hurt. Hey, we get it, you're a lesbian. <laughs> so we were driving in the Uber and the woman said what we need is for the nation to come together. Are the police taking these people out or can we do it ourselves? Okay, well, that's why you're covering your face, so I'd cover my face too if I was like Legio. Is that a, that's a real life oh. puck? Somebody go get a helicopter and take this piece of shit up in the air and drop him. We have had enough of your fucking bullshit. You go back up the fucking steps to talk that soul and this nonsense. So this is what you should be doing. 
not fighting guys. amongst yourselves. I'll be, I'll be going back. We're fighting going against back the back communists. Free rides for commies. Thank you for that sign, my man. You should not be fighting amongst yourselves. You should be fighting with the media. All these fucking leeches. These rats. They come here with their cameras to film you. Because you are the new attraction. You are entertainment to them. You sell. This is not a movement for entertainment. This is a movement for revolution. So get yourselves armed. Make your blacklist of the media. And buy a fucking helicopter. Thank you.